Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today we are finally going to be doing yet another installment of my super popular series here on this channel where I rank pet foods and today I'm going to be ranking canned cat foods. As always, the purpose of this video is to help you guys kind of learn the terminology used by pet food manufacturers when they're marketing their products as well as what different ingredients actually dictate so that you're able to make more educated decisions on your pet's food based on the knowledge that... <clears throat> As always, my intention for making these videos is to give you guys more information so that you are better able to make decisions for your pets. I go over a bunch of different things from the labels and how that impacts the formula, from common ingredients and what those actually mean, and at the end of the day, it's totally my opinion. I'm just here to give you some information and you can do with that information what you'd like. I'm also obviously not able to cover every single brand under the sun, so instead I tried to get a really good sampling of some of the cheaper foods, some of the more expensive foods, some of the really low quality foods, and some of the really high quality foods, and give you much more of a range so that maybe you can take whatever food you are feeding if it's not listed and kind of gauge for yourself where you think it would land based on the information in this video. Ultimately, I'd love for this to be a series with for example, cat cans one, two, and three to be able to include more and more brands. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. I've rambled enough in the beginning of this video, so let's go ahead and get into the ranking system. Now, if you have seen one of my ranking videos before, you're very familiar with this system, but in case you haven't, we're gonna go over it so that you understand kind of the criteria of where I put things. While this entire video is a direct reflection of my opinion. I do try to make it a little bit analytical and give each category different criteria that it has to meet. At the very bottom here, we have the pee pee poo poo category. These foods rely very heavily on unnamed meats or meat byproducts or filler ingredients like corn, wheat, and soy. Ultimately, these foods here at the bottom have very little naturally occurring nutrients, so the actual ingredients aren't making up the bulk of those nutrients. It's definitely more reliant on synthetic vitamins and minerals. So the yucky category are any of those foods that, while they might not fully rely on vitamins and minerals added to get them through to be healthy, they still contain unnamed meats or meat byproducts or those filler ingredients like corn, wheat, and soy. For cheers, these are really great what I consider entry-level foods. So if you're interested in maybe leveling up your pet's food, making it a little bit better quality, this is a good place to start, um, but there's definitely, you know, some lateral movement if you'd like. These foods have no corn, wheat, soy byproducts. There's no unnamed meats. However, these guys might also be from a larger company or larger manufacturer, which often means, you know, less specific sourcing because you're trying to cater to a larger audience. It can also mean potentially a larger recall history, so quite a bit of recalls in the last 10 years because they're doing so much. Um, so that's kind of where that cheers category lands, is the ingredients are usually pretty good on that label, but it's more of the behind the scenes sourcing, company ethics, recall history, that kind of stuff that really differentiates this level from the higher levels. Next we have, oh hell yeah, and this one, again, free corn, wheat, soy byproducts, no unnamed meats. Um, but they're often, you know, smaller companies that make specifically their sourcing and their ethics much more clear. So these are the types of companies where if you go to their website, you're probably going to find a nice fun map or infographic that tells you where they source their ingredients. Some of these companies, if you call up their representative, can tell you the exact farm where they got their chicken that week for that batch of your food. All of those little things that just add a little bit extra. Um, along with that, these are often smaller companies, which doesn't always mean that there's less recall history or better quality of ingredients but knowing the individual brands, in my case, that's often the case here, is less recall history, maybe only one, maybe none in the last 10 years, and then also, usually again, that better ingredient sourcing, if you were to call them up, they could tell you exactly where they got their stuff. At the very top here, we have Chef's Kiss, and this one is more of a sister to Oh Hell Yeah than kind of even a step above. This category is reserved for those foods that offer something that I find really exciting and really cool. 
I look at a lot of ingredient panels and I look into a lot of companies. So when I turn over that bag and I see something that actually makes me a little surprised and excited, that's basically what this category is for. So just something cool that I can point out to you guys for a little extra education or maybe a little extra benefit to you. We're also going to be only looking at the first five ingredients in this video. Obviously, there's more to the food than the first five ingredients. However, the first five do make up the bulk of the food. And if I were to go through every single ingredient, you'd all get bored and it would take a lot longer. We are only worrying about the first five because those make up the bulk of the food and it makes this video a lot smoother. So bear with me there. First up, we have the Friskies Extra Gravy Chunky with Salmon and Savory Gravy Wet Cat Food. Now the very first thing I want to point out is actually going to be the name. So this is part of those labeling rules that I talked about. Because it says with salmon, that means that salmon must make up at least 3% of the food, but it can be exactly 3%. It doesn't have to be higher, it just has to be at the very least make up 3% of this food. For the ingredients, we do have very first ingredient, water sufficient for processing, that's fine. Second ingredient, we have poultry. This does not tell us whether it's chicken, turkey, duck. Another issue is that it will change every time because it does just say poultry. It might be chicken one batch and then turkey the next batch, which can make it really difficult for pets with food sensitivities or pets that can be a little picky. Uh, next we have liver. We don't know what kind of liver, so that's what I consider an unnamed meat. Then we have meat byproducts. So meat byproducts, we know that it comes from a red meat, so it could be beef, it could be pork, it could be goat, it could be lamb, it could be kind of any of those red meats. Um, but we don't know which one, and it can change every time. And then byproducts refers to almost anything but the primary muscle meats. So it could be an assortment of organs, and I get it 100%, organs and food, when they're listed as beef kidney, for example, excellent. I love to see that. When it's a mystery mix that's not consistent from batch to batch, that's when I take issue. So not a fan of meat byproducts. Wheat gluten in this particular case is a thickener, so to make the food you know, more of a thick gravy in this case. Um, however, wheat is a pretty common food allergen in pets. It's also much less nutritionally dense than a lot of other grains and is often used more as a filler. I also included the sixth ingredient on this list because it is salmon. So when you look at the label and you see that it's friskies with salmon, you're expecting it to be, you know, fishy. Whereas instead it's mostly mystery poultry and then some mystery red meat. And then finally the sixth ingredient after their thickener is the salmon. So that's when I say that with being at least 3% can really tell us a lot about that formula. Overall, kind of based off of the criteria and based off of this ingredient panel, the Friskies food is going in pee pee poo poo because it does rely really heavily on those kind of mystery meats, the meats with no names. Next we have the Tiki Cat Puka Puka Luau Succulent Chicken. This one must have at least 25% of that succulent chicken based on that labeling rule. Looking down here at the ingredient panel, we have chicken as the first ingredient, which is excellent. I love to see a named meat as the first ingredient. The second ingredient is chicken broth, which I find perfect. And then we have sunflower seed oil, and then that's it. After that, it goes straight into the vitamins and minerals, which is why I only listed the first three. And I really like and appreciate those really limited ingredient simple foods. And because of that, this particular food is going in the oh hell yeah category. Next we have the Fancy Feast Chunky Turkey Gourmet Wet Cat Food. And again, because of the name, turkey has to make up at least 25% of the food, which is much better than seeing that with salmon that we saw in the very first food. So looking at this ingredient panel, we have turkey broth, which is excellent. We have turkey, again, excellent. And then we have those meat byproducts. So again, we don't really know what kind of meat it is. It's also not listed what cut of meat it is. We know that it's not necessarily the muscle meats, which we don't like as much. Uh, fourth ingredient, we have liver. Again, unnamed, could be anyone's liver. And last but not least, the fifth ingredient on this list is fish. We don't know what kind of fish. It might change every time. And I don't like to ask those questions. I don't like to not know those answers. So for those reasons, this food is going in the pee pee poo poo category. 
they had me at the very first two ingredients those were excellent and had there been maybe one or two less questionable ingredients this would have been just a yucky food so it would have been bumped up a category but because those last three ingredients were more question marks um it didn't rank as high next we have the fussy cat premium tuna formula in aspic this one here because of the name has to be at least 25 percent tuna it's not hard for these wet foods to meet that criteria because most of the food is going to be meat anyway it's just the brilliant nature of wet food so the ingredients for this one here we have tuna we have the water sufficient for processing and we have sunflower seed oil so very similar to that tiki cat super simple ingredients after the sunflower seed oil Everything else is just the vitamins and minerals. So it really is that really high meat content, which I love to see. And just like the Tiki Cat, this one is going in, oh hell yeah. Next we have the Taste of the Wild Canyon River Feline Formula. This is one where the name doesn't really give us much information. Sometimes if it has a fun name like Canyon River, they'll have kind of in lower letters up beneath, like trout and salmon recipe or with trout and rainbow fit, whatever. Um, this particular one that I'm looking at does not, so we don't have any insight of how much of what ingredients is supposed to be in here. But looking at the ingredient panel, trout is our very first ingredient. That's excellent, it's a named fish. Next we have fish broth, not a named fish, but since it's just the broth, it's not as big of a deal in my opinion. Then we have uh, vegetable broth, uh, ocean fish, again, another named ingredient. And then the dried egg product, I'm not a huge fan of because we don't know what that egg product is. Uh, dried egg product itself can involve the shell and can only be shell, um, which don't get me wrong, has some nutrients to it, has some benefits to having eggshell in there, but I'd much rather have it crystal clear for me so I don't have to ask these questions. This particular food is also made by Diamond Pet Foods. I'm bringing this up because it does kind of change where I put it on the list just because Diamond Pet Foods, while they make better quality foods ingredient wise than a lot of other big brands, they also make a lot of food and a lot of their foods do have a pretty big recall history. So when you combine all of those, that's kind of a risk factor to take into consideration potentially. Um, because of that and because of kind of those mystery fishes, this is going into the cheers category. So overall, it's a pretty good food. If you're feeding something from the lower categories and you want something just a bit better, but you're not ready to take a full leap, this is gonna be a great little stepping stone. Next, we have the First Mate Wild Pacific Salmon Formula. Because it says salmon formula, it has to be at least 25% salmon. And for the ingredients, we have boneless, skinless salmon. I love that they are super clear that it is both boneless and skinless. This is the kind of specificity that I really like to see because I have no questions now. I know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, second ingredient is water, sufficient for processing. And then they have some potato in there. And then it's just the vitamins and minerals. In this particular food from First Mate, the potato is most likely a form of thickener. First Mate themselves don't use any gums. They don't use any commercial thickeners. So their texture is much more of like a sloppy pate, I like to describe it. It's pretty watery, um, almost like a thick gravy. But that's one of their big things is they do not use thickeners. They do not use any gums to thicken their products. I think that that's pretty cool and pretty unique. So for that reason, I've put it in the chef's kiss category. They're also just a really great brand out of Canada. Next, we have the Purina Pro Plan, and this is their chicken entree. Because it says chicken entree, it must be at least 25% chicken. Looking at the ingredient panel here, we have water sufficient for processing, which is fine. Uh, chicken, named chicken, we love that. That's where we get the chicken entree, nice and close to the front. And then we have meat byproducts. So we don't know what kind of meat, it could change every time. We also don't know what cuts of meat, that could also change every time. Uh, then we have liver, again, whose liver? I don't know. And then ocean fish, which we're back to me being okay with this. I like ocean fish, that's a good one. Because of the kind of mystery meat aspects of this food, I am putting Purina in the pee pee poo poo category, just because I don't like to ask questions. Next, we have the Instinct Original, and this is their real chicken recipe. 
Also on the front here it says 95% chicken, turkey, and chicken liver. So the fact that they have that 95% on there, it has to be at least 95% of those ingredients listed, which means that, you know, everything after chicken liver is going to have, you know, obviously less than 5% which I really like to see. That's super awesome. Looking at these ingredients, we have chicken, we have the turkey, we have the chicken liver, and then chicken broth, ground flaxseed to use, you know, kind of a little bit as a thickener there. And then their sixth ingredient I thought was really interesting and I actually had to look into a little bit myself, but I included it on here because it was pretty interesting. The sixth ingredient is montremillite clay. And this here is a clay that some studies have shown that when ingested, the clay is able to cling to internal toxins and then flush them through the system. It also makes the formula non-caking. So obviously I'm a huge fan of the listed 95% chicken turkey and chicken liver. It makes it super easy for me to know exactly you know, how much meat's going in there. I think it makes it a lot easier to the consumer. So that in and of itself would be enough to push it into chef's kiss for me. However, the addition of that clay piqued my interest, made me interested enough to look into it and then include it in this video. So that just helps push it into the chef's kiss category for me. Next, we have the Royal Canaan Adult. This is their standard line. We're not gonna get into their prescription foods. This is just their standard food. Like all of the rest of these foods are standard foods. Their ingredient panel. We have water sufficient for processing. We have pork byproducts. So at least I know what animal it's coming from, but we also still don't know what cuts and it could be a changing cut every time. Uh, chicken byproducts, again, I like knowing that it's chicken, but we also don't know what part of the chicken. Uh, chicken liver and then pork liver. So named liver, named liver. That's how I like to see the liver listed. But because the bulk of this food is gonna be that pork byproduct and chicken byproduct, I am putting it in the pee pee poo poo category just because, you know, there's, there's some questions. All right, we have the Blue Wilderness. This is their high protein, low carb turkey. And the ingredients for this guy, we have turkey, turkey broth, turkey liver, natural flavor, and potatoes. That natural flavor, you're very rarely gonna see actually listed out as anything other than natural flavor on an ingredient panel. It's often digest and ultimately it's a palatant. So it's something to help entice the pets to eat and it's just, it's natural. So it comes from something that's not a chemical and that's all we really know about that. But I don't take particular issue with that because that's such a common thing. I don't necessarily knock them down for that specifically. Um, more so that Blue is owned by General Mills, which is a pretty big company. And they also have a history of recalls and not always disclosing ingredients that got them in trouble multiple years ago. They're much better now. Um, but it's it's kind of that shady-ish behind the scenes stuff. And then also, because it's a larger company, that is great sourcing, um, typically, as some of the others. So for those reasons, it's a great entry level food. Like I said, if you're feeding a pee pee poo poo or a yucky food and you just want something a little bit better, this would be a good one. However, it's not the best. Next, we have the wellness chicken entree. Because it's chicken entree, it follows that 25% rule, so at least 25% of this food has to be chicken. For the ingredient panel down here, chicken is the first ingredient, love to see that. Chicken liver is the second ingredient, love to see that. Turkey is the third ingredient, excellent. Chicken broth, awesome. Carrots, awesome. This particular food does get an oh hell yeah in my books. It's pretty clear in that ingredient panel. When I look at it, I don't have any questions to ask myself. Um, and that's, that's what we want. We don't want questions. All right, we have the Authority Everyday Health Adult Turkey Entree and Gravy. Turkey Entree, 25% rule. At least 25% of the food has to be turkey. When we look at the ingredient panel here, we have turkey broth, awesome. Turkey, awesome. Chicken, awesome. Chicken liver, awesome. Wheat gluten, you have so many other things that you could use as a thickener. There's so many other options. Again, wheat. Pretty common food allergen at this point. Not a fan of the wheat gluten. Um, for that reason, this food does go in yucky 
which I, I say like that's a good thing even though the category is yucky. Um, the ingredient panel itself up until that wheat gluten is pretty good and just because of the criteria that I listed in the beginning it has wheat. Can't go above yucky. Next we have Roz and this one is 96% turkey and salmon pate. Again right there makes it very very clear how much of those meats are going to be in this food. And when they're listed like that, obviously turkey, because it's listed first, is going to have at least slightly more than the salmon. But then just like with the 25% rule, none of those ingredients can have less than 3%, so we know it's at least 3% salmon. But based on the ingredient panel that we're going to look at in a second, it's much more even of a split, I believe. So ingredient panel, turkey, salmon, turkey liver, turkey broth, Natural flavor, which like I said before, we're not going to knock them for because most pet foods will just list natural flavor. So because of what I know about Roz and their company ethics and their sourcing, you can go online and find mo out more about their sourcing. You can call them up and learn more about their sourcing. Um, but also because of that 96% turkey and salmon, I really love that clarity there. This food is a chef's kiss for me. I do really enjoy Roz. Next we have the Sheba Delicate Salmon Entree. This one here, because it says delicate salmon, we know that salmon has to be at least 25% of the food. And when we look at the ingredient panel, it does look like it's gonna be close to that 25%. The first ingredient we have is chicken, and then water, and finally that third ingredient is that salmon. After that we have poultry liver. Again, at least we know what kind of liver it is. We know that it's poultry, but we don't know what kind of poultry, and that can change from batch to batch. So, after that we have chicken broth, which is great. So with that, there's really only the poultry liver in that first five that I'm not a huge fan of, which overall makes this food pretty okay. I don't know about you, but I much prefer my meats to not be mysteries. So it, it goes in yucky. It's much better than some of the other foods we've looked at, but in the grand scheme of things, could use some work. Next we have the Ruva meal or no meal. This one is a chicken and beef dinner. So that dinner implies that it must be at least 25% of that chicken and beef, neither of which can be less than 3%. Down at the ingredient panel here, we have chicken broth, chicken, beef, tuna, and that natural flavor. Because of all that and because I know their sourcing is pretty dang good, this particular food is going in oh hell yeah. Next we have the Hills Savory Chicken Entree. Again, this is part of their just standard food line, so it's going to be compared alongside other standard foods. <laughs> we are not going to be going into the prescription stuff today. So for this particular food, it is the Savory Chicken Entree, so it has to be at least 25% chicken. Looking down here at the ingredient panel, we have water, chicken, turkey giblets, pork byproducts. We don't know what those byproducts are, but at least we know they're pork. Uh, pork liver, which implies that maybe the byproducts are not at least usually liver. Um, and then I did include cornstarch and powdered cellulose. So ingredient panel numbers six and seven, because that does play a little bit into my reasonings here. So cornstarch, again, used as a thickener. You have tons of other options for thickeners. Corn, again, pretty common food allergen. Corn is also not easily digested by even people, but especially pets. Um, and it does have a really high sugar content, especially compared to, again, other grains that could be used instead. Um, and, you know, sugar, not great, especially for the behavior of our pets. So that's something to consider. Obviously the cornstarch isn't going to be as bad as when it just says corn, um, but it, it is there. And then they also have powdered cellulose. When you look at bare bones, what powdered cellulose is, it's powdered plant fiber. Most commonly wood. So it's powdered wood fiber. So because of the cornstarch, because of the powdered cellulose, um, and because of those pork byproducts that I don't know anything about, this particular food does go in pee pee poop. Last but not least, we have the Nulo Freestyle Turkey and Chicken Recipe. Because it says recipe, it must be at least 25% turkey and chicken, and neither one of those can be under 3%. Looking down at the ingredient panel here, we have turkey, chicken, turkey liver, turkey broth, and tuna. 
overall a pretty good ingredient panel. This leaves no questions for me, really. For all of those reasons, this new low freestyle food is going into the oh hell yeah category for me personally. And that is my final ranking. I will have the end rank right here so that you guys can take a picture of it if you'd like. I've gotten a couple comments over the couple of months that I've been doing these videos that people will take screenshots and bring them into different pet stores to help them while they shop. I've also gotten some comments from pet store staff who've said that people have brought in screenshots and asked if they had those foods and I think that's awesome. Again, overall, these videos are purely so that you can get a little bit more information, trying to demystify the pet food industry a little bit for you, so that you're able to make decisions based on what you think is going to be best for you and your pet and your situation, based on, you know, different company ethics, if those really matter to you, different ingredients, if those really matter to you. If you guys found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. If you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, I will be leaving a link to the playlist down below. But so far I have done dog kibble, cat kibble, dog cans, now we're doing cat cans. Um, there's tons more categories that I'd like to go into in the future, but these videos do take a little bit of research and a little bit of time to film. So please bear with me and be patient. If you want more nutrition related content, you can find that here on my channel. We also have a ton of behavior and training information on this channel. So overall, I think I like to think I'm a pretty good resource for a lot of people. Um, so feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.